Hello guys, it is Cave Series here, and even though we now have some episodes of the Dumping Ground Series 9, I think we can all agree, even though this series might be good for some people, might be bad for some people, it's definitely not the highest the Tracy Beaker and Dumping Ground franchise has ever been. I'd always argue that the highest, like, peak point of this franchise was in the early 2010s era, with stuff like the early series of the Dumping Ground, and, of course, Tracy Beaker Returns. So, I thought today we take a look back at Trace Bigger Returns and how just epic and awesome it was by looking at my top 10 Trace Bigger Returns episodes. If you're a fan of this channel, you might have seen our top 10 Dumping Ground episodes, but if you haven't seen that and you want to check that out, make sure that you go and click the card up there, or there will be a link down below in the description. And as always, guys, this is my own very personal opinion. You guys will probably have a completely different list to me, so I'd love to hear what you think are the top 10 best episodes of Trace Bigger Returns. Let me know all of them down below in the comments. And before we go any further, just make sure that you've clicked the red subscribe button down below and have your notifications turned on so that you get notified every time we make any brand new Trace Bigger videos. <laughs> So, to start with, I found this list so, so hard to create, simply because Tracy Bigger Returns is one of my all-time favourite TV shows, and I just love absolutely every single episode. I could not tell you a singular bad episode. So, even though I have picked out a top 10 here, that does not mean that any episodes that don't appear in this list are bad. It just means that, unfortunately, they just aren't the best of the best. So, coming in 10th place, we have Big Brother from Series 3, episode episode 4 and what an episode it is of course the episode where we get to say goodbye to Liam and of course this episode is kind of like an ending for Liam in this show but also like a preview to what is to come for him in the dumping ground where of course in series 2 we got Liam's story and he of course returned properly to the show for an episode at the very end of series 2 and I just absolutely love this episode because we get to see Liam going through the final hurdle before he eventually leaves the dumping ground and we also get to see how much he has grown and developed since the first time we saw him. Of course we first was introduced to Liam way back as one of the first characters we ever saw in Tracy Bigger Returns and of course it's the first care kid that Tracy meets from this generation. We of course meet Liam in the police station and this is very much a development on from that and seeing how older Liam still deals with having to be caught up with stuff like the police but now is trying to get out of it. I love all of the fun little things that he has with the foot tracker and how Elektra and a lot of the other characters try and just provoke his anger so that he can break his scanner and will have to leave the dumping ground and I also love the reveal that Jack is actually his brother and I think it just works so well and the emotional ending between Frank and Liam at the end it always just works for me so well so that is my number 10. Coming in ninth place, we have series three, episode 10, going home. Now there's definitely a trend in this list which you're gonna find out soon that I absolutely love any episode that focuses on Elektra. She is my favorite character in all of this franchise and this episode just gives us so much. It gives us so much detail into her past and what her childhood was like and gives us a reason as to why she is the type of person as she is and you really empathize with Elektra having to deal with her parents and how her parents just don't seem to accept her and you can just feel so so sorry for this character. And I just love the awkward contrast between Electra, who is kind of like this imperfect girl, to the, her family, who are like the most traditional, perfect family you can think of. And I just love how putting them in the same room together and finally seeing them reunite just completely makes everything go ballistic and I love it. And I just love the pain and emotion that Electra has in this episode. You really feel sorry for her when she's throwing the dress on the fire and it just brings so much emotion and pain that I absolutely love. And of course Sapphire's side story of actually having to come home as well to the dumping ground also works great with this as well. Coming into 8th place we have series 3 episode 11, the episode straight after that one, Jody 
Andy Jackson. Well, what can we say about this episode? It literally introduced arguably one of the best characters and by far the most long-standing character in this entire franchise, and that is, of course, Jodie Jackson. And I absolutely love Jodie's chemistry with Tracy and Carmen in this episode, and it just works so well. I love how this episode just shows Jodie being treated as rubbish, not only from her family, but in the dumping ground, how she's locked in the toy cupboard, how literally everyone just thinks she stinks and she should not go anywhere near her, and they just completely dehumanize her, and it works so well. And you get to feel so sorry for this brand new character who we've just been introduced to. And it's a great opening for a character that we are eventually going to learn so much about and so much about their backstory and just their personality in general. Coming into number seven, we have A Day in the Countryside. And this episode just completely stands out for me simply because of its countryside setting. It's a complete contrast to more of the city vibes that we get from all of the other episodes. And I just love how it is all set in the countryside and it works so well. And it is also such a really tense episode as well. Seeing Tracy having to cope on her own with Electra and Carmen, and seeing how Carmen is just manipulated by Electra, and of course the tense scene of Carmen falling through the bridge. It's a bit unrealistic how they save her, but it is so tense and I absolutely love it. And I wish we had more episodes like this. The other characters in the story aren't really that good. Mike's team, I've never thought is that amazing in this episode, but Tracy's team and Electra and Carmen and Toby, they're all brilliant in it. Coming into number six, we have series two, episode six, Electra. And of course, like I said before, Electra is my favorite character. So of course the episode where she's introduced is of course going to be on my top 10 list. This introduced my favorite character who I love every time she returns into Dumbergrind. I wish we'd got a proper send off to her and I'm so glad that this was a great introduction to her. I just love how Electra comes into the dumping ground. We barely even know her, but she manages to manipulate all of these characters to do things that you would never see them doing. She manages to manipulate Toby of all people to start stealing. She gets Carmen to steal 20 quid from the office. Yes, they're kind of small stakes, but you kind of feel just how powerful Electra is in this episode. And I love how Liam ends up finding out the truth and how Liam and Electra are completely against each other. And it introduces their initial like hatred of each other, which I absolutely love. And of course, the side story to this is absolutely hilarious with Tracy and Sapphire trying to make Gina happy. So they go to drastic measures and it just comes out so, so funny. Coming into fifth place, we have series two, episode 11, Snakebite, which again, deals with Electra. Seriously, I told you guys there'll be a trend in this. It's because I just love this character so much. And this time we get to learn a lot more about Electra's past as a teenager and why she was constantly moved around care homes. I love the introduction of Electra's old gang, the Cobras. I love Kelly in it. I love the snake symbol in it. And it just works so well for this character. And I also love how we see how much Electra has grown in the Dumb Grind, even though she's only been in it for five episodes right now. And yet she She's already grown into this much better person than what she was before and I love Electra's realization of actually she doesn't want to return back to this life of gang crime sort of life but instead wants to stay where she is. I feel like this episode is definitely a turning point for the character because she definitely realizes from this episode that actually she's fine in the dumping ground and it's a much happier place. And of course this has the hilarious side story of Gina's dancing where we get to see the iconic drastic measures of what the kids go to to try and make Gina dance and that is always the highlight of this episode for me. Coming in fourth place, we have the first two-parter, The Burning Wood Menace and Drain, series two, episode one and two. And if anything was going to be high stakes in Trace Big Returns, it is this two-parter. This is the first time where we've ever had proper high stakes in the show and it is so brilliant. And nowadays when you get high stakes in like the dumping ground, it's kind of been overdone this first time. This is like the first time this ever happened where these two parters were so, so huge. So it just works so well. Everything that happens with Lily and her sisters and Tracy and the Tracy plans and just trying to save the dumping ground in general, it's just all so great. And I love the sort of darker tone on this episode because honestly, if I was ever going to think of an episode that wouldn't be shown in the dumping ground nowadays, it would be this one. It is 
It is really quite dark and horrific and I just absolutely love it. I just love how high the stakes are and at times I actually started to think what if Mike is actually leaving? What if the dumping ground never reopens again? And I just love how that episode builds that up. And of course it has one of the most epic cliffhangers ever where you see Lily so torn of what she's going to do that she ends up falling off the roof and it is arguably the best cliffhanger this show has ever brought us. Coming in third place we have the visitors slash fire starters. Now it's not as high stakes as the Burningwood Menace one but as a introduction to arguably the best series ever my favorite series personally series three I think it works superbly and the stakes are still quite high there is of course new competition with all the characters from the new kids coming in and we of course get the introduction of iconic characters such as Rick and Tyler but also this competition with the care workers with Dennis coming in and I would love to see Dennis return in the dumping ground I just think it would work so so well we finally get an explanation as to how bad Burningwood is and why it's been built up to be so bad throughout the show and I think it just works so brilliantly. I would have loved to have an episode where we actually got to see Burningwood but since it's been set on fire here this is still good enough. I also love the mystery of who started the fire at Burningwood and Elm Tree House and I love how Tracy and Gus go about trying to solve it and of course there is a brilliant cliffhanger at the end where Tracy walks in with Gina and sees the entire place just completely locked up with padlocks. I find that scene so so, so tense and such a brilliant cliffhanger. Coming into second place, we have Anarchy in the DG Series 1, Episode 6. Now, Series 1 of Tracy Beaker Returns isn't really my favorite series. It's probably my least favorite series of that show. However, this episode shines out from everything else. It is so, so good. And I just love how tense and chaotic and fast this episode is. You really get to sympathize with Tracy as you want her to succeed in this episode as basically every other character in the show basically thinks Tracy cannot succeed. Cam is still trying to help out. Gina just completely blatantly says Tracy can't do anything. The kids think Tracy can just be manipulated in this episode so we as the audience are just really wanting Tracy to succeed and I'm so glad that at the end she kind of does with some help from everyone else. I just love how drama with every single character slowly escalates bit by bit till eventually just all abrupts together into complete chaos and literal anarchy and I just love how hilarious it is. One of my favorite scenes from Tracy Big Returns is that hilarious scene of this gradually being built up and you see Toby freaking out about Mike. You've got Sapphire and Gus having that fight. You've got Liam and Frank selling pizzas and you have Harry telling Gina all of this and it just builds up the stakes so so high and you just feel so so sorry for Tracy in this scenario. It is just a brilliant and epic episode. So before we get on to number one I just wanted to give you guys some honorable mentions as this list was really hard to make as I just love all these episodes so much. So some honorable mentions which so close made the list were Shadows, Reward, Justine Littlewood Returns, Sisters, Day at the Beach and Out of Control and now number one is the last episode, Series 3, Episode 13, Goodbye Tracy Beaker. Now, I am a sucker for last episodes. I love the endings. I love when endings give you that cliche montage. My favorite MCU film is Avengers Endgame. I just love how sad endings can be. And I just love when a show completely comes together as a whole and has a brilliant ending. And I think Tracy Beaker Returns does this superbly. It still has really high stakes, even though it is the ending. We have, of course, my Mike and the flat falling down on him. We have, of course, Tracy worrying that she won't be missed. And finally, we get another Tracy plan, which I think is one of the best Tracy plans we've got in the whole series. And we also have such an emotional ending to this character. I absolutely love the scene and I always just get so emotional at the final scene where we see Tracy saying goodbye to Mike and she's looking out of the window, giving references to the story of Tracy Beaker and her and Mike have a final sit down and goodbye and we get to see Tracy basically spilling out her heart to Mike saying she wishes he was her father. I just love that Mike finally decides to let Tracy go and that shot of Tracy just saying goodbye and walking out always gets me every single time. The only criticism I have with this episode is that the dumping ground just kind of undermines it because of course this episode basically said goodbye to Tracy Beaker Returns but at the same time it kind of said goodbye to the dumping ground as a whole. At this moment in time we didn't think we'd be getting another show just without Tracy Beaker and unfortunately in the first episode of the dumping ground if you watch this in chronological order and you watch this episode and then the first episode of the dumping ground 
it kind of just undermines it as everything that this episode built up with a new care worker and Tracy being gone suddenly just doesn't really matter in the dumping ground, which is fine, but at the same time, I just wish that the dumping ground had taken this episode a bit more seriously. But either way, if we're just looking at Tracy Beaker Returns as a whole, this is by far my most favorite episode as it finally says a goodbye to Tracy Beaker, the character that we've grown and loved. But anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Guys, let me know down below what you think of my list. Do you agree with it? Do you not? And let me know what your top 10 Tracy Beaker Returns episodes are. I'd love to hear them. And as always, we've been here on Gate of Theories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.